What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're going to be taking a look at yesterday's patch for Infinite Warfare, that's December 9th. We got a bunch of weapon balancing changes, and I want to look at those in quite a bit of detail. And then also there's a bunch of bomb sites that were moved for search and destroy, and a few other little tweaks that were made. Let's get into it. Are you kidding me? Alright guys, so as always when I cover these patch notes, a lot of times I just focus on the things that are really important and there's a bunch of little things that might also be added here and I will leave a link in the description below to all of the patch notes so you can check them out for yourself. So before we get into the weapon balancing part, which is the part I want to focus on the most, we got a bunch of bomb sites moved in Search and Destroy. And they did this just to adjust the balancing a little bit, they felt like one side had too much of an advantage on some of the maps. So bomb sites got moved on Precinct, Frost, Throwback, Scorch, breakout and retaliation so quite a few changes that have been made there i'm not much of a search guy so i couldn't really show you the before and after because i honestly don't know the before but in the patch notes they describe exactly where they moved which bomb sites so you can take a look at that if you're interested also for uplink they moved the starting spawns on precinct for uplink they changed them around a little bit just to make it a little bit more balanced and also they made a few other uplink changes on certain maps like certain areas where you couldn't like bounce it off of a rooftop and get it over top of that roof. It would immediately reset as soon as it touched that rooftop. So now they made it less aggressive in that area. Again, I'm not going to go into every single detail with that kind of stuff because that's really specific to a particular game mode. And for a lot of people, they won't be interested in that anyways. So if you are interested, go and check out the patch notes. But now let's get into the weapon balancing. So first up, the Mauler Mammoth, which is the epic variant of the Mauler, and this doesn't impact any other variants of the Mauler. The Mammoth got an increase to its recoil. Now I've only run into the Mammoth a few times in public matches, so I can't really tell you my opinion on this because I think I've maybe picked it up once and like got a kill or two with it. So I, I didn't see any sort of issue with the Mauler Mammoth, but their stats seem to suggest that there was a bit of an issue. So I guess that's okay, although I do kind of feel bad for the people that saved up to buy that Mammoth. Next up we've got the Raw, which got increased hip spread as well as a slight recoil increase. Now I played with this a bunch yesterday after the patch, and I did notice that slight recoil increase, like just a little bit, but the RAW is still, in my mind, a top tier gun. It is still an excellent gun, and I wouldn't let this deter you from ever using the RAW again. It's just something that brings it a little bit more in line, and hopefully encourages people to use some of the other guns. Moving on to the DMR1, it is now a one-shot headshot at all ranges, which is really good to see, because the DMR1 before, it actually took two shots to the head to kill, and this was a semi-auto sniper rifle. And I always feel that any sniper rifle should always be a one-shot kill to the head. That's just my opinion on this. It's going to make going for headshots a whole lot easier, and I'm very happy with this change. I'm actually kind of excited to start grinding headshots on that. Moving on to the EBR. With the EBR, they actually increase the center speed a little bit. So when you fire your shot, you get kicked way up in the air because EBR has got quite a bit of recoil. It still kicks way up in the air, but it comes back down to center a little bit faster, which I think is a good change as well. That recoil is a little bit ridiculous in my mind, so it's nice to see that it at least returns faster. Next up, it wasn't an individual weapon that was balanced, but the akimbo attachment was nerfed a little bit. So you get a slight reduction in damage range now when you're running guns akimbo, and you get a slight increase to your hip spread. So therefore, akimbo attachments on pistols isn't going to be nearly as effective as it used to be. And a lot of people were complaining like akimbo hornets or even akimbo kendals. We're a little bit on the powerful side, so I'm all right with seeing this change. Just make it a little bit, a little bit less viable. You got to really close that distance now when you're using akimbo. Next up, both the Kendall 44 as well as the Hornet pistol, both of those got increased hip fire spreads. Now I can see why they did that with the Hornet. Not too sure why they did it with the Kendall 44 because I mean it's a semi-auto pistol, but at the same time, if you're using a single Kendall, it's not really going to affect you too much because you're going to be aiming down sight most of the time, anyways. Next up is a pretty big change that I'm actually really liking here. They increased the base hip spread for all assault rifles without special hip spread values. And they said this includes the NV4, the OSA, and the Type 2. I'm really happy to see this change, just because I feel like those guns are a little bit too dominant up close, and they make it so SMGs just become less and less viable. Like, why would you use an SMG when you could use an OSA or an NV4 or a Type 2, and still be pretty decent up close, but then also be kind of dominant at somewhat longer ranges. They were just a little bit too versatile, and I like the looks of this change. Next up, the OSA got quite a noticeable nerf here, and with the OSA, you no longer have reduced hip spread relative to the other assault rifles, so now it's equal to the other assault rifles. 
and they also increase the recoil pretty considerably. But having said that, after playing with the OSA for many, many games after this patch, it's still very controllable recoil. You're definitely not going to be able to challenge people across the map, but even at that mid to somewhat long range, it's controllable recoil because it's almost completely vertical recoil. There isn't too much side to side sway as it kicks up, and therefore if you aim a little bit lower on your target and you pull down a little bit with your right analog stick, you can still control the recoil with the OSA. So I don't think it's quite as bad as a lot of people are making it out to be. I feel like just reading on Reddit, a lot of people are making it out to be like the end of the world and they completely destroyed the OSA. And in my opinion, the OSA is still a solid, close to mid-range sort of gun. Moving on to the next one, the K-Bar got increased hip spread values, but it's still lower hip spread values than the other assault rifles. So it's still going to be slightly better than the other assault rifles. It just wasn't nerfed as much as the other assault rifles. In addition to this for the K-Bar, it no longer has a recoil reduction in its first shot. So after its first shot before the patch, its second shot would be pretty much right on target as well. That's no longer the case. That recoil kicks in immediately after you start firing. And they also reduce the five shot kill range. So I hand tested this range reduction. And as you can see here, it looks like it's about a 20% decrease to its five shot kill range, but its four shot kill range was unchanged. So quite a bit done to the K-Bar. I haven't played around with it too much since the nerf because nobody was really talking about it. And honestly, I just kind of overlooked it. But I, I don't know if they nerfed it a little bit too much. Just on paper, it seems like they did quite a bit to it. We'll just have to wait and see how that one plays out. Now moving on to the next one. This is one of the big ones and one of the ones I was very excited to see. The Volt got a slight reduction in recoil and an increased three shot kill range. They pretty much brought the Volk back to where it was pre-patch. I'm still a little bit unsure about the recoil, if they brought the recoil right back to where it is pre-patch. But if you look on the chart here, as you can see, our three-shot kill range appears to be back where it was before it got that nerf a little while ago. And the Volk is back. It is now, once again, a very usable gun. I don't know if it would be like completely overpowered or dominant at this point. It just seems to be solid. And then finally, the one that I'm most excited for, the R3K got a pretty massive buff to its three-shot kill potential. As you can see here, I hand-tested this once again, and we got a pretty crazy increase to our three-shot kill range here. And keep in mind, this is without hitting that neck or head multiplier. The R3K has both a neck as well as a head multiplier, and if you hit one of your shots on either the neck or the head, it will even extend this one-burst kill potential even further out. So this is just with body shots out to this range, which is excellent to see. I played around with the R3K a bunch since this update, and it feels really solid now. I'm able to actually do very, very well with it. I don't know if I would call it top tier yet. I've got to play around with it a bit more to say that. But as it is right now, this is exactly where a three-round burst gun should be, in my opinion. So, there we have it. That's going to wrap it up for the December 9th patch. Like I said, there might be a few other little things, not weapon balancing things, but like other minor things in those patch notes. And if you're interested, click that link down below, and it'll take you to the patch notes. Overall, my opinion on the weapon balancing with this, I'm really excited to see all of the things that they've done. I think for the most part, these are all pushing things in the right direction. But one thing I'm still disappointed in is SMGs weren't really touched at all. And I feel like SMGs are just not that good in this game. I know they increase the hip spread on some of the assault rifles, which will help a little bit. But I don't think it's enough to really make the SMGs a viable option in comparison to the assault rifles in most scenarios. But I don't want to complain too much because, I mean, everything so far that I've seen with this weapon balancing seems to be a positive change. And I think it's all a step in the right direction. I'd like to know your guys' opinion on this patch in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.